Hey, everybody. Our first live. Chill. Bet. See, see, this works out so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go outside. We still working it out, y'all, but we figured we're going to give it to y'all live. We're going to give it to y'all fresh. <laughs> Straight out the gate. We're going to do it like this. So you want to start? Yes. So I'll share a little bit about myself. Um, mental health is a, is a really big thing in my family. Um, we have people who have suffered from schizophrenia. We have people who have been, you know, committed for mental health issues. Lots of things. I myself, I have been in therapy. I have been, I've seen a psychiatrist. And this has been going on, woo, 2015. <laughs> And I would say that it has impacted my life in such a positive, in such a positive way. I really thought that I was a effective communicator until, <laughs> until I went to therapy. I thought I was one of the most happiest people and just, you know, I'm just like, yeah, I'm therapy, I don't need therapy. I'm going to go in here. Everything's going to be fine. I took their little questionnaire, and by the end of it, when they tallied up everything, they were like, you are severely depressed. Me? <laughs> Me? What? I ain't saying. I ain't got nothing to be saying about. But if people look at it, that's when I realized that people really look at depression like, oh, you're choosing to be sad or, you know, just get over it. And it's not, it's not even like that. It's not that simple. <laughs> it's deep-rooted from when you're a child. And I already know it's going to be some people. I know it's people who can relate. <laughs> you're going to have some people that can relate, and you're going to have some people that hate, that don't like it. But hey, it's something that happens. But, but guess what? Your first bullies, your first trauma, it starts with your family. That's, that's, you, that's where it starts. That's it true. starts at home. Everything starts at home. I mean, it can even come from, you know, not having a dad in your life, your mom not being in your life. It can mm -hmm. it can be all sorts of things. You could be bullied in school. It, it's it's a lot that can happen. Yep. And <laughs> you never really think about how how your mental will really affect your your physical being, like your physical vessel. And it will do so much to you. If inside you feel as though you're inadequate or you don't do enough or nobody loves you, nobody supports you, all of that makes a really big difference in how you tackle your life in all sorts of relationships, not just intimate ones, friendships, you know, relationships with your siblings, with your parents, you know, with your family in general. Yeah, because I, when I go through something, I pull away. I know you noticed that. I pull away when I go through something, and, like, I've been to a therapist. I definitely stopped. I shouldn't have, but I have stopped. I had some self-healing that I had to do for myself because I've been through a lot, so... It's just definitely a lot. But then I see on my social media where I see, okay, this girl commits suicide or this guy commits suicide or right. other people are talking about how they're going through so much, but they don't have nobody to talk to. So we definitely want to get on the platform to be like, hey, this is going on. I need somebody to talk to. <laughs> Bring it all here. You know What's what I'm really saying? Good? And I think that it's just funny because when you came to me with the idea I mean I'm just like wow that's, it's wild that she want to do this podcast because you know you know I talk to people all the time people always want to come to me like Mish what you think Mish I got this going on you know and I I'm not judgmental I definitely just I like for people to just be able to be vulnerable and know that what we talk about is what we talk about and it's going to stay right here. It's, this is a judgment-free zone. 
And but what do you say? What do you say to people that you give advice to and they don't take it or they don't like what you say? Then what you say? <laughs> you shouldn't have came to me. <laughs> you knew. You knew what was going to go down when you came to Nisha, okay? Because I can't say that you're my friend. I can't say that I love you. I can't say that you know. I care about you as a person if I'm not going to keep it funky with you about what you're doing or tell you that you're wrong or how you went about it. You could have went about a situation differently. And that's the thing. It is so... We have normalized not talking about feelings. You know, and especially especially our black men. Especially yes, our black definitely. men. And I'm going a, I'm to a share something with y'all. I'm not going to say the guy's name or nothing like that. But it was a, it was an older gentleman who wanted to talk to me. And, you know, something just in my spirit was just like, eh, this ain't, this ain't it. This ain't it. I should not talk to him. I need to run in the opposite direction. However, my... My spiritual awakening put me in a different place mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually for me to be able to really sit back and just be like, well, let me just ask him this one simple question. Why are you hurting? I never thought that by me saying, why are you hurting? Not only that, but saying, dang, you know, you got so much pain you holding on to that this man would just pour out his heart for everything that he went through. We is not doing that. You're being summoned. <laughs> no, you. I don't want to go. The little one looking for you. <laughs> Giving it to y'all live and straight. Yes. <laughs> Babies and dogs. Babies and dogs. This is for my dog. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um... I already brought it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was about to say. But yeah, for black guys, it's I've dated guys that will say, well, I've been hurt before, or I don't have my mom and dad, or, you know, something like that. And for me, it's just like, stuff like that, a guy doesn't want to open up. No. And they make things very hard because they don't want to communicate when a female is trying to communicate. But it's like, when the female communicates so much, we start to lock down because you all are doing the same thing, or guys are doing the same thing. So... It definitely makes it hard. And then it makes you feel like you need to talk to someone. Like straight but up. You, it, it feels like that. But you know what? The the problem comes in is that with males that they are taught to be emotionally withdrawn. And when in fact guys I know we got some fellas on here, but what's really good, what's really good, y'all emotion. And y'all express y'all emotion through anger. Anger is branched off from sadness. It's the same thing. And it's just the fact, you're not a robot. Like, and that's that's what a lot of fellas got to realize. You're not a robot. You have feelings. You feel and it's it doesn't make you weak, you know. It be a it be a lot of it's a lot of men out here. Like you can look in their eyes. Well, at least I can. I can tell. Look in their eyes and just see so much pain there. See that you know it's so much that they holding on to inside that they really want to talk about, but they don't want to be judged. They don't want to be looked at like they a bitch. <laughs> you know, like they a little sissy or they crying. You know, but it's it's really where you see guys who they going, they killing themselves or they killing their kids and they the girlfriends and all of that. I'm like, all in all, if they would have just 
sat down and talked to somebody and just said how they felt or whatever they was going through, it would have had a totally different impact. Like when I talk, when I talk to the uh, to the gentleman, he he's like almost forty. Okay, I didn't judge him. Like he, his exact words was, "Yeah, my family, they don't approve of my recreational drug of choice." Okay, so then that's when that comes in the substance abuse. To or you know smoking weed, drinking, chain smoking cigarettes, all to mask the pain, all of these things, so they don't really have to deal with the things that they're going through. And I was like, well, ain't nothing wrong with having a recreational drug of choice. What is it? He was like, water. I said, oh, I love water. I drink all types of water. What that ain't the one he's talking about. Like I like, I like Essentia. You know, Polis. That Poland Springs water, that's some good stuff right there. And he like, nah, nah, nah. Dang, he you, you really don't know. Crazy. I, was, I was so, I was so taken back. So we have the comments. My uncle, yeah. hey, Uncle Sterling, says some people don't like listening to other people's problems, and that is called, it, called a setback. That is true. You have some people that don't have the patience to help anybody or listen to anyone, but... You do have some people, people that just be like, what's wrong? Because they want you to open up, but mm -hmm. you're too scared to open up because you got so much rejection. Yeah. Rejection and people, they, they're not listening to understand or as one of my favorite readers, Miss Empress B, understand. Understand. I like to say understand, and I make sure that I say that a lot now because it really does mean something different. Because when you truly want to understand someone, you want to know what they're feeling inside. So you want to understand what they're going through. But a lot of people don't know how to listen to what somebody's going through or listen to what somebody is saying and understand what it is that they're really going through or that you know, what they really mean, like the true essence behind what they're telling you. And that's a, that's a lot of the thing. A lot of people don't, they don't have that ability to to dissect and go through because a lot of people, they just like, nah, nah, nah. Like, that's too much. Like, you just gotta say what you gotta, just gotta say what you feel, say what you feel. But some people, they don't know. They don't know how to say it. They don't know, they don't know what they should do. You know, they don't even know how to begin. They just like, where do you start with it? You know, how do you how do you tackle it? Just like how do I how do I say that what they said hurt my feelings? People yeah. think that sounds childish, but you yeah. how long have you been together? I'll be girl, I tell somebody and maybe we just a little too blunt like what she said. But I don't too like what said, they hurt my feelings. Yeah. And it's really just that simple. The simplest things are so hard for people to do. So hard. It's either it's either you say, you know, what you said hurt my feelings or just simply just be like, okay, why well, came to you with this? Like, are you going to help me? You know what I'm saying? Most people, <laughs> it says facts. Most people will tell you to pray on it, but that's not solving the problem. Um, yeah, because a lot of people I mean, don't know what to pray for. It I depends on how you say that say prayer it. doesn't solve it. Yeah. But the thing of it is, is when you pray for something or you tell God you're ready for something, you got to be gonna, ready for He going to send it right after that. He you got to be ready for it. Like, you think you ready? Let me show you. Let's see if you're really ready. And a lot of people, you have to prepare your mental first. You yeah. still got to take that first step, but mentally you got to be ready for whatever comes with it. You got to be willing to talk about it because a lot of people, they want help, but you can't get help if your mouth closed. But the same thing, don't get fed. I learned that also when you pray about it, if you're going to pray about it and you put it in God's hands, don't worry about it. Let yeah. it go. You gave it to him. Take let it back. It. You, can't, you can't keep worrying about it. And I, I, I learned that the hard way. I I'm guilty. <laughs> I be like, Lord, I'm gonna give it to you. And then you sometimes you just feel so unworthy. You be like, you know what? Why am I asking God to deal with that? I could deal with that. But this is that is another reason why, you know, I was I was very willing to do this with you. 
because a lot of people, it's a lot of things. I've seen a lot, a lot of my friends from high school. I would have never thought that they were dealing with mental health issues. Um, one girl that I was a Girl Scout with, uh, her name is Dominique. I actually went and sat down with her and I let her record this whole, like I did a whole session and everything with her. Um, not a lot of people know, but two years ago, I was ready to leave up out of here. And when I say leave up out of here, Nisha was ready to end it. I was ready. I just, that's how, that's how emotionally, mentally drained that I was. I felt like, I felt like I wasn't appreciated. I felt like I wasn't loved. I just felt like, you know, damn, I'm only, I'm only as good as what I can do for people. And once, once you satisfied and once you got your feel, like you done. But that's how I'm it just, feel. It I'm does feel like you're only here to serve people and please people, but it just be like, okay, when I need something, where's this person? But you, they, they're never there. So mm -hmm. it's a lot. Yeah, but you know, I, I, I never would have thought that the the source and like the root of my pain really came from my childhood. I always thought that, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I had a pretty dope ass childhood, you know what I'm saying? I was a kid. Yeah, when you think about it, like, that man, I saw I growing up, a lot of the things that I experienced growing up, you know, it was, it was, it was hard. You know, living in water. I almost got abducted by this man. He hopped out on me out, out the bushes. You would have thought it was something out of a movie. Nigga was naked underneath a trench coat. You said he was what? Naked and this? He was naked. He was hiding in the damn woods. He was. He had a trench coat on. He hopped out of the damn uh, woods and took the damn trench coat open and grabbed me. I started screaming and shit. I was just so happy that the firefighters was outside washing the fire truck that day. But that just goes to show you, like, I walked I walk various ways home from school when I was living in Walden. So just to know, like, I'm like, how did this man know that I was going to be walking this way today? Oh, he was watching. Yes. It's just like, how would, and how would that make you, how would that make any what like I think I was like nine or ten, you know, because I think I had just I had just got reconnected with my biological father, and you know I'm just like, dang, how do I how do I go home and tell my mom or how do I call my father and tell him that some weird ass white man jumped out on me naked trying to snatch my ass up and do something? <laughs> how how do you do that? How do you do that at nine, ten years old? You know, Most, some parents don't believe when their kids say stuff like that. I done been through that shit too. You know, uh, I don't know where my mom is at. Hi, mom. You know, <laughs> when I was when I was uh, younger, one of one of my mom's boyfriends, that nigga tried to rape me. He did. He was an alcoholic. He was a shitty human being. Okay, I have forgiven that person for what they did. I gave that to God a long time ago, but it's not that's not easy because it's just like, damn, I really went through a lot of my life like not not trusting bald niggas. Nah, bald, you know, I don't like bald men, but I'm triggered by bald men. <laughs> I'm triggered by bald men, and that's why. I don't, I don't like um if unless I'm like extremely comfortable with you, I do not don't touch my face. I don't like it. One, people don't wash their hands, and two, that's something that that person he always did to me every time he came around me. He would do do this right here, and I'm like, yeah. So I don't like people touching my face. That's not something that I ever told anybody, but that's the real reason why. Because I'm but like, how long did it take you to get over that? What happened to you? Um, when I actually sat down and talked to somebody about it, it had been years. So let's see, I'm 29. <laughs> I had nine when I was 20. So <laughs> woo, I was probably like 23. 
24 when I first actually openly sat down and talked to somebody about um the things that had happened to me. Hold on, we gotta. It's hard to open up to folks because I realize everyone had their own problems and at the end of the day, what I tell them won't be on their mind before they go to bed or next second. That's not true because I've had people come to me and talk to me about their problems and still to this day, like I feel my I try my best to help. Like I'm a very big people's person and I love people and I don't like to see nobody hurt or down. So like you have some okay. people that will help you and keep it on your mind. I mean, keep yeah, it on that's mind. that's a that's a big thing too with um with a lot of kids. But you know what? I feel like people over sexualize a lot. Love is love is fluid. Yes, yeah, get it. It's it's definitely the company. You yeah, keep. it's the company you keep that's doing that. Yeah, but because I've but been you, through a lot, so. And a lot of- I just I just got over everything that happened to me in my past. Like it's been some things that I only talked to my mom about. Like I love that woman. That's the best woman ever. Like Hi, mom. she's my blessing. Hi mom. Um I've been through some stuff in my past, like my father wasn't in my life, but honestly, I didn't forgive any of that until oh, I went God. to therapy maybe two or three years ago. I Vengeful. just got over everything. Vengeful, okay. <laughs> this is that let's be honest. Yes. You be what you want people to pay. I'm like, oh, yeah. you gonna feel you gonna feel this shit to Man, me. well, I, I tried my best to hurt my father. I hurt how I hurt. I'm gonna hit you below the belt. I'm gonna call you all types of raggedy ass motherfuckers just to make me feel better. I want you to feel exactly how I felt. I think you ain't shit, so I'm going to tell you everything that I could possibly think of that's under ain't shit until I think you done felt it. Okay, he said, as far as men open up to men. Now, that part is probably hard because you're probably opening up to a man that never opened up to anyone else. So he's probably holding his own issues, and you're telling him yours, so it's really not going to help. You kind of need, like, um, you need a female, some most men you don't agree with this and i'm pretty sure your girls don't agree with it but males need female friends and it's not like to have a a a relationship type of thing it could be just a person that you just have a conversation with if you don't feel comfortable talking to a therapist but you know but you know what i have i have a lot of male friends i do too shout out shout out to all my homies from that that (laughs) that friendly fam you know they they already know I have been I've been an open book for a very long time. And for Love me, you too, Ma. You have to you have to show people your transparency. And I'm if I look at it like Eminem. You got everybody remember eight now. He knew the only way that he would be able to win that battle is if he exposed himself. Because anything that he would say after that it will be repetitive. Like, he already said that, though. So what you got to say now? Oh, well, he already said that, though. We already know that about him. He said that about himself. He called himself white trash. You know what I'm saying? But it's not because he felt that way about himself. That was other people's perception of him. Yeah. But it's when people are not willing to be vulnerable. They just do not. They do not want to be vulnerable because it's so many people who get close to you just so they can know all of this personal stuff about you and then use it against you. And or throw it time, in your face. Throw it in your face. I'm telling you. They throw but you it know what? I, 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 would love, I would love to, though. I really... um. I think that's a part of the reason why I really miss my Zion family. Shout out to Zion Church, Pastor Battle. I I think that opening up from childhood trauma, some of us are beaten from speaking our minds at a young age, so that makes us not... That's true. That is very true. (laughs) Raise your virtual... Hit them hearts, y'all, if you ever got an ass whooping that you know you didn't deserve. (laughs) I think we we need to all hit that heart. (laughs) Where my heart at? (laughs) Rest in peace to my little brother, Taiki. Hi, Cookie. Hi, Shug. Thank you for joining (laughs) in. But that is true. What's what's that famous quote? What happens in my house stays, stays in my house. In my house. <laughs> and you make sure your black ass is in the house before it's the lights toxic. go out. 
It's toxic. I enjoy telling my friends. I enjoy. It says, please talk to the kids that's coming out of the closet. Some of them don't feel like they want to, com they want to, com they feel like they want to commit suicide. All right. That's, so that's like one of the biggest. Let me tell you Okay. I get hit on by everything. I am a lover. I am a lover of people. Okay. It is, I feel like. If you if you are a female and you want and you find a female attractive or you want to be intimately close to another female, if you are a guy and you feel like you know you are more comfortable talking to another man about certain things or you're attracted to another man, that's your business. I don't feel like anybody should have the right to tell somebody that who they love or who they want. To be. Oh, who they isn't should be with? What they isn't who, who they should be with? I was like, you know? I love everybody. Like, I don't care who you talk to, what you do in your personal life. As long as you happy, stay happy and be you. But see, a That's lot awesome. of a lot of kids, a lot of kids coming out of the closet and feeling like they they commit suicide because they don't have the support. They they're uh they're judged, and instead of people embracing what it is. You know that they like it's what they like, it's what yeah. they want, but I, I think it's kind of trying to the force parents. them, huh? It's like they're not having that support from their fan, their parents that's what it is, yeah. And I think what the pandemic has made it, it's made it really hard. I wouldn't even say really hard. People look at the pandemic like it was a bad thing, but I really look at it as it was God's blessing to the world because. He put everybody in a position to where you really don't have a choice but to look at the issues and things going on with you, going on in your family, going on with yourself, because you was forced to stay in one place. You was you forced were, to love yourself and your family and your friends, definitely. But it, it might be hard it. for some people because they couldn't leave out the house, so they couldn't, you know, go get that occasional drink or go hang with somebody that made them feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Because some people don't want to talk on the phone or text. Some people feel like they want to be in that person's around their energy in that environment with them. So Because energy is transferable. Yeah. Which is why you can't be going around sharing your parts with everybody. <laughs> okay? You gonna mix me out here females too. I'm going to try to clean that up too, y'all. I'm going to work on it. I ain't going to say niggas too much more. <laughs> <laughs> but people, males, females, men, women, oh, they, they just hurt. Hurt people hurt people. That is so real. And there's so much going on that people just, they don't want to face it because they just feel like people are not going to understand. Yeah. They're not going to understand. They're like, are they really going to listen to me? Are they really going to try to understand my point of view, where I'm coming from? It's just like, no. A kid just got taken from his parents because they shaved his head and embarrassed him on live. But the kid felt he really did do something wrong. Some kids are really confused on what to feel. See, and let me tell you something. They come from, they come from households with broken communication skills. It definitely is. Communication is key. When you, If you sit down, well, that's what needs to be normalized. It is normal to sit down and talk about your feelings. It is not normal to hold your feelings inside. See, but that's something I'm going through now because... Um, a lot of you don't know, but I have a daughter who has a learning disability and she has a speech impediment. And for me, I communicate with my daughter. How are you feeling? What is it that you want? What is it that you don't want? Mm -hmm. It's very important to talk to your kids. It's very important to open up to people because it can really hurt them. Like my daughter has told me before that sometimes she feels like when she gets in trouble, it's her fault. And mm -hmm. for me, it's not your fault, baby. Like, we're going to do what we got to do to get you the way you need to be. And I want you to understand that no matter what happens or what you're going through, you're always loved. And mommy loves you no matter what you go through. Like, you parents need to really sit down with their kids because their kids have feelings too. You know what I'm saying? Kids have opinions and kids <laughs> feel how they feel. Talk to your kids. So, my God, baby. She is eight. And I... Everybody knows I'm a kid magnet. It's 
You might as well call me the baby whisperer. <laughs> now you the baby kidnapper. <laughs> <laughs> they come willingly. <laughs> but um it's 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 a bittersweet thing for me because I want I want other people's kids to talk to them how their kids be willing to talk to me. Uh-huh. And I think that's that's a that's a hard thing for any parent. I couldn't imagine how that would feel for my daughter or my son or whoever to go and talk to somebody else, but they're afraid to talk to me and they're around me every day. Yeah. That that most people would get upset. You know what I'm saying? Why didn't you tell me that? And I need to know. No, it's not. No, that that tough love shit ain't gonna cut it with these kids. Yeah, look how the look what that shit did to us. I'm telling you, boy, I ain't not. I'm not knocking it. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for everything that I've been through because I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. But you gotta really sit down and talk to your kids. Like, yeah, I like what she just said. Like, we do have to take in consideration of how our kids learn from us. Like. <laughs> Didn't that so that the other day? My kids <laughs> have been two of the world, but they got that from me. So I want them to understand that I don't want you to be how mommy is. I want you to be better than mommy. I want you to do way better than mommy. I want you to su- succeed, get everywhere, do everything you want to do. Open your horizons and reach for the stars. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I definitely agree with you, Shug. Yeah. You got to... <laughs> That's what I realized, like... Prime example. Oh no! <laughs> Every time somebody call my name, I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then when I call my daughter, she was like, oh. Or like my grandpa would call my daughter, she like, what do he want now? Uh-huh. I'm like, when she get that phone? Huh? When she get that phone? Did she got that for me. Yeah. I'll be like, I'll be like, look, okay. I am still, I'm still a work in progress, you know, but at the same time, it's just like, you know, when you open yourself up to teach your kids. Love you too. Have a good day at work. When you open yourself up and you and you commit yourself to teaching your kids to be effective communicators, communicating their feelings and creating a space for them where they feel safe to talk about their feelings and they're not going to get in trouble. They're not going to be punished or penalized for just saying how they feel. Like for me, I think it's crazy that my god baby wants to have this conversation with her mom so bad and tell her how she feels about this situation that she knows that she has nothing to do with. But she's terrified because she doesn't know how her mom is going to react. She's just so used to the yelling and the screaming and, you know, not being heard. Like, for an eight-year-old to say, my mom never asked me what I want to do or what I want to be when I grow up. She just tells me what to do and how I should feel. Oh, no. Telling me that I don't feel like, and to tell me, you know, you don't feel that way. You know, that's that is my pet. I'm still wor- I'm still working on that. Okay, opening yourself up also means changing one's behavior. Indeed, sure. That's, that's very true. But the kids' mental health goes deep because they're are also their parents that don't want to be with each other or yeah. But see, that's that's the thing where parents put kids in the middle of problem. their personal issues. Yeah, the kids have nothing to do and with And they it. shouldn't. There's no reason why your kids should not see you arguing. Your kids should not be de- dealing with a lot of yelling and screaming, fussing and fighting. Like, none of that should be going on. Like that's, That messes up their mind, man. That it really does. You're way. conditioning your child to normalize that. So then when they get older, they're, they're going to get go used and they're going to repeat gonna want that them. same cycle. Okay. Yeah. So it's Definitely. just like... It's like everybody, everybody has been in been in high school or been in school, and it was just like that really fast promiscuous girl or that dude who who hit everybody. He didn't hit all the girls, all the girls. One of you know what I'm saying? 
But they don't even know that those those people broken households. Yep. Okay. Broken households. Now they 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 can't communicate to their parents, or they was probably touched when they was younger. They were probably molested when they was younger. You know, and they have were exposed to a lot of sexual activities and things that they shouldn't have been involved in at the at that age at yeah. a very young age. Having patience with your child, your kids is key. That is very true. Understanding their mental and emotional ways of handling things is important. Yeah, accountability is definitely key. You got to be able to tell your kids and, and accept the part that you play in a lot of things. I can't stand when somebody... And I can say it now, you be like, when, uh, like, let's take relationships, for example. You're like, oh, well... He treated me bad, and he didn't appreciate me, and he hurt me, or she did this and she did that. But you allowed it. Yeah, you accepted it. One thing for Che, I agree with that, and that's why I don't like how the court systems is because they'll tell you, you know, your kids is not older, old enough to tell you what they want or how they feel or what they need. And for me, if they can open their mouth and say what they need. I'm listening. As a mom, I'm going to listen. Okay, that's what you need. That's what you want. My kids, my mommy and me days, I take my kids out one by one. Where where you want to go? We're going to get our nails done. We're going to get ice cream. You have to do that because you if you don't, your kids time. is going to open up to the wrong person. I'm trying to tell you. Shoot, I think that's why a lot of people end up having sex at a young age is because their parents don't talk to them about it. Yeah. If you talk to your kids about that, it's not going to... Somebody else doesn't get the chance to pick the narrative or glorify something that shouldn't be glorified. I tell my girls, keep them cookies in them pants till you're 50. I ain't playing. I mean, <laughs> knock your people out. Keep them cookies to yourself. I just, hey, I'm like, I'm just telling them all the shit that they can get from fucking around. I'm like, you want a cauliflower butt? <laughs> no, show, show them a picture. They'd be like, a cauliflower butt. What is that? Why you want to put vegetables in your butt? <laughs> I'm like, that's what your butt going to look like if you go messing around with people. No, nah, tell them how it's going to feel. They're going to be like, ew, girl. Ew, Especially I... if you got old girls like me. Old girls. Huh. Girl, I'm, not, I'm not ready for it. I so for me, kids, kids are just so comfortable with asking me anything because they know Nish gonna tell them the truth. Um. So if I if I know that nine times out of ten, they parent is not ready to have that conversation, I will say, look, I appreciate the fact that you came to me and you wanted to talk about this to me. But it's really a conversation that should be had with your mom and your dad, or, you know, whoever. Because I'm not sure how they want to go about talking about that with you. Yeah. And, you know, that's the problem that I run into with my daughter and my niece because they're so, they spend a lot of time together. And they're two years apart, but they're so advanced for their age. Yeah. Their level of understanding is impeccable. Their communication is stellar. They're going to mm -hmm. tell you how they feel. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't care. Young, old, or in between, they're going to talk about it. Like, they're going to say, oh, what did, uh, now, uh, my daughter, my grandmother got upset with her about something. It's like, the bed wasn't made, right? And I had to explain to her, Graham has came from a time period where she didn't have much of anything. You know, she didn't have a big old house to live in like we live in now. She didn't have a million pairs of shoes and, you know, enough clothes that she could dress for a month and never wear the same outfit twice. You know, so material things mean a lot more to her because she didn't have them and she worked very hard to get the stuff that she had now. I'm like, and a lot of kids, they don't understand that because they really <laughs> think that it's just something harsh. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is the type of stuff. <laughs> see, but don't you see how she came out and she plays with you with stuff like that. Like I love that my kids say 
their personality. They want to play about everything. They want you to play with them and they want to open up and just be as silly as they can be without nobody judging them. Girl, I love that. I, I, I embrace, I call it weirdness, okay? Weird is a term that's used in my house, but it is not a negative, uh, it's not a negative connotation. It's not at all. We embrace the term weird because something being weird is, is what one would consider different, correct? Yeah. And I, I encourage my kids to be different. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with somebody calling you weird. Why is being weird a problem? Yeah. Why do you want? Why would you want to be like everybody else? Yeah, that's I how when my kids, the world be if we all look the same, if we all act the same. That's just like kids back. Like, I want this just like her, and I'd be like, why you want the same thing as her? Let's change it up. Let's do something different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's let's be you. Let's be different. So yeah, she's funny though. <laughs> wow, like a mama. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, but, but you know what? People people look at my daughter and they just like, man. No, look at her in the mirror behind you. Cause she know I'm on live. She wants to do. She wants to do a YouTube channel so bad. So let her. I let her be free. Her. Yes, let her be free. She gonna. She gonna have some. I can see you. I can see you. <laughs> You need something? But yes, you guys, we'll be doing these lives a lot. We're definitely going to have our YouTube channel and everything up. Yeah, because we just want to talk about things and this, have people this is open my up daughter, to guys. <laughs> We definitely just, yeah. like, we. if y'all want to write us, you can inbox either one of us. Give us yes, topics to talk do. about, uh, your opinions, your questions. If somebody want to open up to us and talk, I'm down. Let's, let's talk. Let's be friends. Let's get to know each other. You know what I'm saying? I can tell you what I've been through. I can. You can tell me what you've been through. We can learn from each other. Hey, yeah. let's do it. Uh, I, will, I encourage everybody to really take up... Um, meditation people think that it's really hard but it's it's really not i've been definitely want i've been wanting to do it so bad but i haven't even done it i, I i've been thinking about just like doing like a day like once a week where i uh, pick a really nice day and just have people come out to like an open field or a park you really <laughs> and maybe that's something with maybe that's something we could do once a week on our podcast, yeah, you know what I'm saying. That'd be dope. We really, we really. Uh, this is this is a platform for our people. Hey, Erin, how you doing? This is a this is a platform for our people. You know, we want to know what y'all need. We want to know what it is you want to talk about. How and what we is. call it. What's, What's really good? good? <laughs> What's really good? Because that we it's a lot of people out here faking it for real, for real. Definitely just hide behind a smile. Hey, but you know what? We're not when when I say fake, I I don't mean like if you feeling bad, you should walk around with a sad face on. No, no, no. I'm saying. If you're feeling something, feel it. If yeah. somebody, if somebody who you trust and who you care about asks you, "Hey, how you doing?" Yeah, fake it to yeah, you. Pay, pay yeah, pay for famous for that. Ain't, that ain't We're real. not doing that. Let's let's <laughs> open up. Let's let it all out. Let's be free. Yeah, you you gotta be you gotta be honest with yourself, and that's that's the thing. Loyalty comes with honesty. See, if but you it's not just that. Honest with yourself. How you gonna expect somebody else to be honest and loyal to you? See, but it's not just that. Some people don't love their self. It's exactly. love you first before you love anybody else. Deal with yourself before you try to deal with anybody. And I had to learn that the hard way. Girl, I, I ain't even gonna lie to you. The one that, like when I read this uh quote from Will Smith talking about happiness is our responsibility that yeah. was the realest thing i've ever read because that's true and that is why a lot of people are hesitant about relationships because they feel like 
dang y'all, what I'm gonna do to make this person happy? How I'm gonna keep them happy? But it's you not can't love nobody to you make can't somebody, love somebody happy. Exactly. No. They have to love and be happy Happiness with is your responsibility. Yeah, definitely. Love yourself first before you try to love anybody because all you're gonna do is destroy them even more. Yeah, I got it. See, I have, an, uh, I have an emotional support animal who's whining right now. <laughs> She's a service dog. Her name is Nova. No, you, you can't know. please everyone. And I don't You're say not you try to please to. everyone. You're, You're supposed, not to supposed to please yourself. To. Make yourself happy. And if that person is not happy, that means that they're not healthy, happy within themselves. And that's something they have to work on themselves. Look at, look at my crack. Yeah. Yeah. Lick me all in the face. See, this is this girl is so emotional. She cries. People would look at her because she's a she's a pet. They think that she would be like this vicious animal, sweetest damn thing ever. She just be excited and want to love on people. She loves being pet. She loves to snuggle up with people. It's definitely different ways for people to find love. It ain't just in a person. As long as you love yourself, it could be like you have a service dog. It can be, it could be anything. But that's a real, that's a real question though. A lot of people don't know what it means to love yourself. No, we got to do that on a whole nother podcast, bro. Don't even start. <laughs> don't even start. We're going to start that on a whole nother one. Cause I'm just, I'm just dropping a gym. People what, don't know how to love themselves. What does it what does it mean to love yourself? What is really what is really loving yourself? Cause I learned after the last two relationships I've tried, I've learned that I had to love myself because I didn't love myself. And I'm like, how can I love somebody else or try to love someone else if I didn't love myself? So I've learned this whole this last year has been like a whole healing experience for me. Really. And I'm happy as ever. Hey, Maggie. <laughs> I I would say the same thing. It's like um, I had abandonment issues. I ain't going to lie. Because um, I felt as though like everybody that I opened up to, everybody that I let in and that I really trusted, that I cared for, you know, when things got real or stuff got so hard, they left. They rolled out. That's you know, how nobody had the same nobody had the same will you know, or like the same drive to really find to really to really put the work in <laughs> to really put the work in and <laughs> everything loves me <laughs> and I think that's that's always that's my thing um we're gonna talk about this too on the podcast you know impact it's a it's a real thing because a lot of people they choose they're loners or they choose to be by themselves because when they go around other people they absorb their energy like they literally feel what the people around them are feeling and a lot of people don't know what to do with that and that was like the that was one of the hardest things for me to learn how to do when my friends and my family come to me and talk to me about their problems. It's not actually internalizing that pain and making it my own. Because I can literally feel how y'all feel. Like everybody walking around with a straight face on. I always knew there was something wrong with you at work. You walking around smiling and shit. I'm looking at you. I'm like we ain't gonna talk about work. Just the way we met was just so wild. I was like, "Oh yeah, I'ma like this joke right here. She funny." <laughs> how you walked? How you walked up to me with all that energy, thinking that I was gonna be like, Ooh. and I'm like, "I'm working." <laughs> now, you know how sometimes you have to be that way with some people because some people ain't ready for work. They too childish. They you gotta treat them like kids. So yeah, we ain't gonna talk about that, but. Yeah, when I met you, I was just like, dog, her energy is so dope. Like, then when I was like, I want to do a podcast so bad. I've been wanting to do it for so long. And at first, I wanted to do the topic of just sex. And I was like, <laughs> no, I was going to do like an after doc thing. But I'm like, no, let's talk about everything. I'm like, Ma, what should we do? She's like, talk about everything. And I was like, we was thinking like, all right, who should I ask to, you know, join this? And I'm like, 
Nisha is the best person. <laughs> the best person because you're you're open you're honest you're free you're not scared to talk so i i have no i have no problem um saying what i've been through because i'm like how do i expect for people to really trust and put faith in what i'm doing if i don't show them what it is that i've been through if i don't tell them if i don't put it out there I'm just like i don't i don't act like everything is all right you know, when people say, Hey, Nisha, how you doing? I'm like, Man, I ain't got no complaints. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm here. I woke up this morning, so I, I ain't about to be mad. I, I don't think I've ever seen it a day where you was like actually down and like, Yes, like, you did. Sad. When? Uh, let's see. Hi, dad. Hi. <laughs> Y'all, that's, that's my daddy, Mr. I don't give a fin up. He in Germany right now. He all the way on the other side of the world, tuning in to the kid. I love you, Dad. That's good. Hi, Nation. He's joining the podcast, y'all. We're going to keep doing this thing. We got Absolutely. To. Let me tell I think it's funny that he got on here because I frequently drive with my niece. I learned how to do that from him. <laughs> I think I would crash if I did that. You're not going to crash. I'm a safe driver. No, I I'm a me. mom. I learned how to multitask. I had to. But um, what was I Oh no, you did. You have seen me. Uh, where was you? you was going to work, and I was crying. It was when we was working at the hospital. I was so hot. Okay, no, I, I do remember that. I do remember. Yeah, that. but it's never been a moment where you was like really down, where you had the two that you ain't want to do nothing. Like I've never seen you that type of. Way. No, because I am a I'm a firm believer in. You you choose your emotions. I have definitely become a master of my emotions now. I definitely wasn't back then because I just most I would just put the top on it. That's that's all I could really say is I would put the top on my emotions because I knew that people were not receptive to the kind of truth that I tell. People, uh, people aren't aren't ready for that, and that's something that my grandfather told me. He said, "Nisha, you, you, you tell the truth, and a lot of people they say that they want that, but they really don't. They yeah, but I had to learn that because they're not ready for the truth. I had to learn that because I don't like opening up to people, and I don't like to. I didn't like how to tell how I felt at first. So when I opened up and finally was able to tell people how I feel." it just got worse like i'm super blunt like and like my mother she'd be like i'm so sick of you saying i'm like they all right that's my slogan they all right they be all right like that's just how like if, i mean you just gotta deal with it if you can't you take it, it. You and then some days some of my mother used to be like you know you so mean you so nasty to people but when she was telling me that she was like i know you're not ready to mature because you don't understand Still working on the emotional part. I could be having a good day, but then think about something that I've been. Trying that's that's like you're trying to hide your emotions, and then finally you want to you know think about it. For me, I say don't hide your emotion. I say if you want to cry, cry. If you feel type of way, you don't have nobody to talk to. Write it out. Yeah. You, you can't you hold it in. It's going to make it worse. It's going to make it worse. Sad, so, I, I'm a... People be like, oh, you into that Zodiac shit. But people should really look into their signs. They will better understand themselves as a person. I'm into my sign. I'm a crazy Pisces. <laughs> so, I'm definitely into my sign. You are not a crazy Pisces. So we're, but we're too emotional. We're too emotional. Because you're water. I know. And that water. sucks. Water. It sucks. Emotion. But... I know I hate it, but it, it sucks. But I had to learn to deal with it. It's it's just because you literally feel everything and you don't want to. Exactly. That is, <laughs> that's the bad part about it. Yeah. Still working on the emotional part. I could be having a good day, but then think about something that I've been avoiding or made me feel away. That's why I was just telling him stop hiding it. If you gotta cry, cry. If you don't have nobody to talk to, write it out. Don't hold it in because it's going to make it worse. That's why people don't like to hug me. You know that? 
People well, don't like to people don't like to hug me because <laughs> it makes them want to cry. <laughs> that's because you. That's because you have like the best energy. Like I'm a healer. Yeah, you 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 have like the best energy. I've never felt like people... anything bad around you, so it's just like no. I really have, I have no malicious intent. And like, it's really no secret. Even if I'm mad at you, I'm going to tell you I'm mad at you. If I you feel say like, like if you say like that at me, I'm going to laugh. <laughs> if you like, I'm going to slap you, you. I'm going to, bro, I want to slap you. You're really pissing me off right now. And this is why. I don't like how you said this. When you said this, I felt like this. I felt like you, blah, 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 blah. Like, that's normal. People have to make that normal for you to be able to break that down and say what it is that's going on. Prime example, my ex. You know my ex. The tree. Mm -hmm. So nonchalant about everything. Always acting like he don't care. And I just now, I used to really bother me. But now I'm just like... I don't know what you be running for. Because you know I see you. Yeah. That's what people can't stomach. The fact that I see it. I always see it. I choose not to say anything because I know a lot of people, they, they're not ready for the floodgate of emotion that's going to come with it. A lot of people ain't ready for that. But a lot of people don't understand that you have to do it. Like, you have to let it out. If you don't, it's just making it's it a whole step. lot worse. Cry about it. Let it out. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I used to hate when I cry. I would hate when I would cry. Because I'm like, man, people really looking at these tears like like I'm hurt. But they don't understand that it's not just that I'm hurt. See, but you don't have to do it in front of nobody. Do I'm it in the shower. But you, nah, but for me, I want, for me now, I want people to see. I want people to see it. I want people to see, like, I want you to see just how bad what you did, like, how that really affects me. And instead of taking it to, like, a point of, like, hostility and anger, like, just keeping it at a tone, like, just like this and, like, you know, when you did X, Y, and what is What is your sign? He's a sad. Oh, Oh, God. Y'all have to start talking to people. Like, you can't go without talking to a sibling. You got to talk to your sibling and let them know how you feel. And if they don't, if they don't like what you say, then at least you know that you did your part. You told them how you feel. Like, I had my, my twin, he doesn't listen to nobody. And I tell him how I feel. He get an attitude. He may not talk to me for a couple of days. He'll be right back. <laughs> he'll need something. He'll be right back. I promise he'll be right back. Yeah, like you, you have said, maybe it's just me, my friend, or is that you seem like you hold a lot in a whole <laughs> lot. You gotta let it out. Oh, you gotta skitter, let it out. he skitter hold a lot in. He do. He got let he's it out. always he's always been like that. Silent, but definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely what they are. Yeah. Silent, but like I said, too. like me and Nisha, you want to open up? You can DM us. You can write us. It don't matter. Like, hey, I'm open. I love talking to people. I, I love looking for the last one. Laugh at it. <laughs> I love talking to people. So if you want to talk to somebody, hey, what's up, new friend? Hey, what's going on? Let's talk about you know, it. What's up, fam? How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know every time I see you on the podcast now, I'll be like, welcome back. <laughs> so yeah. You gotta open up to people. You can't always let it. You can't always hold it in. It's a sibling. I know you miss your sibling. Miss my sibling. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get it. I don't talk. I don't talk to. Uh, I don't talk to my little brother like that. But it's really. I'm coming. It's really only because I know the little nigga don't listen. And I'd be like, and he he take a lot of my patience. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a it's a lot to deal with my little brother. But at the same time, I I know he means well. But the thing of it is, is people gotta get they gotta get out of their pride and their ego, because it, it it causes it causes more harm than good. You know, if you know that your desired result is for things to to be positive and to move 
in a healthy direction. You gotta be you gotta be willing to take a risk somewhere. There's there's no reward without taking a risk. But I guess it's little brothers for everybody because I don't even talk to my little brothers on my father's side like that. And I mean, I have my reasons. They know how I feel though. So yeah, I guess everybody's brothers have problems. <laughs> but this has definitely been a good podcast, and I love that we started it today. Um, absolutely we're gonna do it more than once a week we're gonna we're gonna post our new topic um our next topic we're gonna post it today or tomorrow why you don't want to talk to your little brother che i don't even what did your little brother do see che you don't have a problem opening up and you know that so i don't understand why you don't want to talk to your brother you open up a lot way too much sometimes but you But is there is there such thing as opening up way too much? Well, see, that's something different if he won't listen. That's well, maybe maybe ready. it's not too much, but maybe it's just I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. A lot no, of little brother, nobody listens. You don't even listen. Hey, my um, one thing, my little brother. Uh, y'all, a lot of people know my little brother. My little brother, he's stubborn as shit. He is a Scorpio. Hey, hey, how are you? How you been? Another water sign. Yes. Come on, world. I, mean, I know you just want to be seen because you're excited, but you're also nervous at the same time. <laughs> I will give you your shirt back when I wash it. <laughs> I love that I can steal my daughter's clothes, too. Hey, I've been doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I miss you, too. How you been? How you been? You got to keep joining our podcast, man. Starting this thing, we making a platform for us black people, especially our men that don't want to talk about nothing. We talking about But see, people. that's where it start that's where it starts though, especially men who have younger siblings. Yeah, y'all, y'all gotta y'all gotta be willing to fight for it like y'all be wanting to get that booty. You gotta put you gotta put forth the same effort. But you always gotta compare something like that. Because it's true. Sometimes that's what people understand. But see, you know what? I realize that some some men have resentment against their younger siblings because maybe the parents wasn't doing their part and they had to raise their siblings. You know what I'm saying? Well, I did. That's why I treat my brother the way that I treat him. He don't get on my nerves. He just, yeah, fight for the booty. Fight for the booty. <laughs> fight, fight for your emotions and your feelings and your mental health. But how do you continue with someone who you know doesn't booty. believe in you? And you can't continue to be with somebody that does not believe in you. That's just something you cannot do. They're just gonna bring you down. He he know why I'm making this. Thing. He know. Y'all had that conversation before? Nah, cause that ain't that's news to me. But now, now I know another part of that avoidance there, Skitter. He know what I'm talking about. He know. Yes, they talking about sibling. Oh, sibling wise. Mm-hmm. If they yeah, don't believe in you, all you can do is prove them it's, wrong. It's not. It, it should motivate even, you. That's not that, but that's not that shouldn't be the motivation though, but because that comes from a low vibrational place. Because that's just like it's like, oh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, but it should be more so of like. I can show you that if I can tell you. That's what I'm. That's what I mean by motivate. Like I'm going. I'm gonna do mm-hmm. what I gotta do, regardless of what you say. Yeah, but you see, the streets ain't keeping it funky with these kids either. And that's, they that's definitely not. Misconception. Like that's why I wish a lot, a lot more of these dudes that's in that's in these gangs and stuff where they used to be in gangs. I really wish they would talk to these kids and tell them. Like it was, it's not what I thought it was gonna be when I got in there, because yeah. really they was just broken. They didn't have no family, you know. They didn't have the love and the support at home that they really needed. So they turned to the streets and they turned to this whack ass, trash ass music. And <laughs> you just like, okay, what exactly am I supposed to? What are, what are you supposed to do with that? You want to feel better. You want to feel love. But you're listening to music is talking about fuck bitches, fuck with everybody. All they want to do is yeah. go by with the music, say. Yeah. Gucci shoes, <laughs> Gucci flip flops. Now everybody wants Gucci flip flops, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's just like, but that Gucci flip flop, 
ain't healing your hurt heart. It's definitely not. That you know, people out here they they out here chasing the bag, and there is nothing wrong with chasing the bag. But you should have that same drive and determination for you to be in a healthy mental space. Because mm -hmm. all of you can have the money and the fame and the fortune. I'm like, look at all these celebrities and shit. You would never think that they have half of the problems that they go through. But you know, you should. You gotta people the, the superficial. It's the superficial for me. People idolize the superficial shit, but claim that ain't nobody real out here. Ain't nobody real out here. I'm like, yeah. you hear but that a you lot. faking it. You hear that a lot. But you faking it though. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody real out here, but you sad for real. Yep. You hurt for real. Yep. You mad for real. You frustrated for real. You want somebody to talk to. You want to cry for real. You want to scream for real. You want to tell. You want to tell your brother. It hurts my feelings that you don't support my dream. That you don't support my music. This is really what I love to do. And hell, even if you don't believe in it, just be like, man, keep working. Mm -hmm. You can't even give me that. You can't give me give me that push. But at the same time, when you have a vision, it ain't for nobody to understand your vision but you. Yep. You can't make somebody understand your vision or where you come from because it's yours. Yep. Only you the only see. thing you can do is work at it. Yep. And then your work will show for itself. I'm like, Skitter, you see, you 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 are very dedicated to your music. You are very dedicated to what you do. He's always sending out stuff about his lives, about shows that he's doing, the music. He's always posting it, always posting it. That's how you manifest. You yeah. got to keep speaking it out into existence. You got to say what you want. Closed mouths don't get fed. Not at all. If you don't talk about it, how somebody going to know? It's people, you, you probably got people mad at you or you mad at somebody down there and know why you mad at it. But you mad at them because you think they don't care, but you never said nothing to them. Yeah, you never asked. Nah. Never asked. You can't expect somebody to understand where you're coming from if you don't even tell them where you're coming from. Yep, I agree. Ain't no way they gonna know if you don't say it. Yeah. It's gonna ruffle some feathers. I'm trying to tell you. I can't wait to get some of my folks on here, okay? Cause they tell they be like, Be your boat rocker. She's a feather ruffler. She say the shit that don't nobody want. Say she say the shit that don't nobody want. Oh, I know that for a fact. <laughs> I know that for a fact. I definitely do. I be like, you know that nigga too, right? You said. You know he fucking around that bitch. You know she got another nigga. Why you getting all upset? Why you don't be break up with her? You know that baby like ice cream. Why you keep buying all that ice cream? It's just, you know, it be shit, it be shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Something so, so sensitive. Like, I used to get mad because my damn grandmother would always take my goddamn washcloth out of the shower. And then wouldn't tell me that she took it. So then I go get my naked ass in the shower. And don't have no washcloth. I don't have no washcloth. Didn't went in there, rearranged all my stuff, can't find my meds, I can't the stuff on my face, my whole routine is thrown off. Cause now I done stuck and threw everything off. And I never said nothing to her. You know what I did instead? Instead of telling her it made me upset. I just went in her bathroom and rearranged all her shit. Bro, I knew you was about to say that. <laughs> I knew you was about to say that. I went in her bathroom, I rearranged all her shit. I moved the medicines and everything around. She went in that joint and went the fuck off. Who came in my room? Did this, did that. She's like, didn't feel good, did it? <laughs> Stay your ass out my bathroom. Treat people how you want to be treated. That sounds childish and shit, right? But it's so true. It's so basic. The simplest things, people just be like, oh, that, that's stupid. Well, you the damn dummy for not one and two, except the fact that it really is that simple and you just making it complicated. Uh -huh. I love how we got some feedback today. I definitely, especially the men. And, just, and yeah, I, I love the feedback we got today. 
Yeah, I would greatly appreciate all the feedback and everybody who's listening today. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I'm definitely, we're going to be uh, making another page for people to come into and add and whatever. I, I, I don't want any people on my personal page. Yeah, yeah, I don't want nobody on my personal page. <laughs> I don't want nobody in my business. <laughs> It'd be too much. <laughs> Let's talk about the topic and keep it moving. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I don't I don't have a problem uh, talking about it. Just to, to make it simpler, easier for everybody, it's just we're going to uh, create a separate page. So that way you can send all the DMs and everything there. And it will be us, too. Just the you ain't got to worry about anybody else seeing or knowing you know when we bring topics up if you guys um dm us we will not say your name we no, will no. use the proper pronouns yeah and you know address the topics that want to be addressed if you so choose to say yourself on the live that yeah that was my situation whatever feel free to yeah um, but once, definitely once we get uh, things set up with these mics and all and that good jazz, yeah. we still working out all this stuff, y'all. I'm just playing around with everything. <laughs> yeah, but we definitely got to set. We're going to have, we're going to do it more than once a week. So, yeah. Um, thank you, Che. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we're going to do it more than one time a day. I mean, one, more than one time a week. Uh, we would love for y'all to DM us from our regular page for now with topic and things that y'all want to talk about. We definitely want to give a, ourselves a platform so that we can open up and you all to be able to do the same thing. We're yeah. definitely going to have you all joining in on the lives. and Absolutely. So we can get everybody's opinion. Most A lot of times we'll have males so that we can see their sides and their point of views as well because I think that would definitely be a fun debate. Um, and that's that's really that's the, when we uh, honestly guys when me and Chanel sat down to talk about this like we really are gearing this for the men a lot of talk shows out here that have female co-hosts they're focusing so much on the females, females but females talk always about talk about how they feel we always females talk, talk about that bitch get on my goddamn yes. <laughs> yes and you know it do you know they we 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 got we got stop the nonsense, man. All that. I mean, if it was like down south, like growing up in North Carolina, where if you had a problem with somebody, you told me like, hey, yo, after school, you know, we get Step off the bus, outside. we'll beat your ass, nigga. Exactly. Get this shit out. You better know it. that's that country for you. And then, and then the ice cream truck come around there, like, what kind of pops you get? What you want? Yeah. Instead what that of like that going good? and shooting up somebody's goddamn house or doing some mm-hmm. dumb shit like that, nah, I don't, I ain't never been one for that. But that's that's type things. We definitely want the fellas to feel like that they know that they have a voice and that we do care. Yeah. You know, we want to get that black men are men of color. We want to understand you all. We want to understand where y'all coming from, how y'all feel. Like, we will never be able to get anywhere if y'all don't open up and speak. You know what I'm saying? So... We definitely want to give y'all that platform to do that. Most definitely. We're gonna so y'all definitely reaching out to having professional people. I mean, yes. doctors, lawyers. Yeah. We're gonna have people on here. Yes. To talk to y'all, give y'all the tools that you need to be effective communicators. To talk to your family, talk to your kids, and just really set yourselves free. Yeah, so much better. I promise you. I promise you. Definitely. So we definitely want to post all of our our YouTube channel and Instagram and Facebook. We we'll try even make a Twitter. Like we're gonna put po- TikTok everything. We're gonna post it all. So y'all stay tuned and y'all make sure y'all follow everything. And I'm excited to get this going. <laughs> yeah, because we want to know from y'all. What's really good? What's really good, y'all? What's really good? Love y'all. Out.